How's it going everybody? Clint here with Classic Firearms coming at y'all today with a video all about some bipods. I've been noticing in uh, my DM some of y'all slipping up in there and one of them was asking about a bipod for home defense and uh, just just no, don't you don't need it for home defense. But if you are trying to take some stable shots, get that most comfort shot, comfortable shot at distance, then absolutely a bipod is gonna work great for you. There are other options out there too. If you're sitting from like, or shooting from a sitting position, you can get different types of rests out there that you can use. Uh, but bipods are great because they attach right to your gun. It's not a separate piece that you have to lug around with you. And you can just set it up however you need to for it to work. They're great. The first one I wanted to talk about is one that's been very popular lately and something a little bit newer to the market and it's Magpul's bipod. And it's a polymer design. And it's also gonna be the lightest one that we're talking about today. It's at 11 ounces and also the most affordable uh, depending on where you look of course, which should be our website. But really neat option for you. And as you can tell, just sits just like that right there. And then this one does extend for you, which is pretty nice. You got this little button you click on and you just press that and extend it to whatever length you need it to go to. So if you're shooting on uneven terrain and let's just say it's a little bit higher rised over here, maybe you're sitting on a slope or something like that, or maybe you're on a hill where I've shot plenty of times before if you saw some of our giveaway videos and you might need to shoot at a different position, you can. And also too, the gun can rotate on this type of bipod, which is really neat. So even though this bipod or this leg here is fully extended, this one is fully collapsed, the rifle is still in a flat shooting platform. So it's still straight, right? Pretty cool. So the Magpul one, like I said, is very easy to mount up to. There's all sorts of different options out there. You can get the Picatinny one, the M-Lock one, and all sorts of them. This one here, I've got on my PTR-91 with the uh, Midwest Industries M-Lock rail. This is the M-Lock model. I decided for my PTR, I still want to act, you know, to you know, side in, shoot accurately with things like that, my 308. Uh, so I figured, yeah, I'd go with the lightest one that's out there and it's durable enough. It does flex a little bit. So if you are on that uneven terrain or something like that, it's not gonna break on you, which is a good thing. It's polymer, it's gonna, it's gonna bend a little bit, but it's not gonna do anything crazy and it's going to be able to withstand 308 as I know. All right, so good little bipod and I like it. You can also adjust all the different settings on it as far as how much tension there is for the rotation of the gun and also the twisting of the gun. It allows you to sway. I have mine pretty much fully tightened right now and you can lock it down if you want, but it's easy enough. You can rotate, which I think is a great option. And by using this little swivel down here, you can either tighten that or loosen it to whatever you desire. And like I said, I keep mine pretty much tightened all the way down because when I flip this guy back up, I would like for it to remain centered. And he's got these buttons you push, you see right here. Try to show you guys the best that I can. Awkward to do on camera when I gotta try to keep the gun facing, you know. But anyway, like I said, you can have this thing swiveling uh, whichever direction you need it to. And then just line it back up whenever you're ready to get back out there for the shot, all right. But uh, yeah, great little bipod. I like it, it works well, and it's lightweight. Let's go ahead and talk one that's a little bit more of a military classic, the Harris bipod. Uh, Harris Engineering has been around for a long time, manufacturing all sorts of great high-end products and their bipods are definitely what something that they are known for. So the Harris bipod uses spring retention, obviously on this guy here, you'll notice the legs, watch how the spring separates a little bit. So that way you can just flip these guys right down and eh, there it goes. <laughs> these things are rugged and they work great. I think this one's the six to nine inch model. So collapsed, they're about six inches and then extended, they're right around nine inches. You got this little button here, press that, pops right back into place. And I really, really like that feature a lot, simply because if you're up on a move and you need to go, you can hit that button and get them stowed and uh, back into place, which is nice. And then just doing that and you're ready to rock and roll. You'll notice with like the Magpul and the AccuTac that we'll talk about here in just a moment, great bipods, but you do have to press these buttons to try to, you know, get them to collapse which is sometimes not all that fun. So I'm a huge fan of the Harris bipod because of that simplicity that they added there. Now also too, you're gonna notice all these different little knobs that they have on this bipod. That again is just to tighten down the tension on how much there is on the leg. So if I, instead of having it completely extended, if I wanna have it uh, somewhere maybe about here, I can just pull that out some and then rotate and then adjust to wherever I need to go. So you can pretty much 
customize it to anywhere you need. It's not a set notch like you'll see on the other bipods. Also too, we are gonna take a few of these out to the range, shoot some so you guys can see, maybe challenge myself with like uh, my AR-10 here, how many accurate shots can I get uh, quickie, quickly <laughs> with, uh, with, with and without the bipod, all right? So that should be pretty fun here in a little bit. But anyway, like I said, Harris Engineering, good time, looks good, looks clean, and uh, it's just a ruggedly built piece of machinery, and I, I like it on my little AR-10 build here. It feels good to shoot, and uh, I also like the long eye relief of this Leupold optic here, so pretty cool. Also, as far as how the bipod is mounted, this again is a Aero Precision M-Lock rail, and I think this is the Atlas One rail, I think is what it's called. But uh, this guy is attached via a, kind of like the old school sling mount. I'm gonna try to show this off the best that I can. Loosen that guy up, and it's a QD type of attachment. You just loosen it up, and it pops off. <laughs> There we go. So you'll see it kind of latches into place right there and it just uses kind of like what your old, you know, sling loop or sling mount looks like and it just mounts right onto that guy. I have an M-Lock adapter on here uh, because, well, I didn't find one of these that just mounted straight into M-Lock and now it just mounts just right into there like that and you just tighten this guy down and you're all set. So it's really easy to do and it's a rugged, like I said, rugged piece of machinery, but yeah, a lot of fun. Next up is the AccuTech bipod, which we have and I do love this bipod. However, it's a heavy guy. Like I said before, the Magpul is coming in at about 11 ounces. The Harris Engineering bipod is coming in at about 13. This one's coming in at about 20 and is also the most expensive one, but it is definitely the most rugged and durable bipod that we have to offer. And is, is bad. It's also the same one that we gave away on the SCAR 20S that we gave away not too long ago. You probably remember, remember seeing in the intro me running around with it, extending the bipod, laying down with the bipod, trying to get the bipod back up. And they make it mostly easy for you, which is pretty nice. Uh, so it does have that springing back into action uh, type of mechanism that I do like a lot. And you'll notice too that instead of buttons or anything like you have to push, all you do is pull down on the bipod and then rotate it wherever you need it to go. So that is a nice quick feature that might take a little bit of practice getting used to, but because of the ergonomics and the cutting that they have in the bipod itself, it's almost like Glock could you know, take a lesson from them, that uh, they make it really ergonomic for you to actually get a hold of this guy and grab it. So pretty nice that they did that. And again, you can set this guy up to mount into many more positions than what you could on the previous two ones that I talked about. So if you wanted to go at more of like a 45 degree angle on this guy, you can, just like that right there. Of course, having it completely extended, might make it a little bit easier for you. And if you are on flat terrain, this might work out pretty good because you can actually push into the dirt in front of you and make this a very stable shooting platform, which is great. So AccuTac, again, just making some of the most rugged and probably one of the best bipods on the market. And this one obviously got <laughs> mounted up to a SCAR 17 because it just looks so freaking cool. And just remember looking cool is what matters, right? But uh, no, it does have a Picatinny attachment on here and it locks into place. It does have a tension screw on the back here so you can actually decide or you know choose what's best for you about how tight this guy locks onto the Picatinny. You also have uh, this little lever you see right here, which loosens up how much sway you have. So again, if you're on that uneven terrain and needed to get at to a weird position to shoot this guy level, you can just hit that lever. Once you find that comfortable position, you can lock it back down and it's not going anywhere. So pretty cool stuff. You'll see these on probably a couple more giveaways that we do that are DMR like. Uh, again, the SCAR 20 was just perfect for this one uh, because, well, I wanted to make that like the ideal DMR with the five and a half Trigicon and all that stuff. So it worked out pretty well, I think. And I think the video looked good and that's really what matters. But anyway, what do y'all say we head up to the range? I know the title of this video is like, do you really need a bipod or something along those lines? And again, it really depends on your application. Home defense, you straight up don't need a bipod, all right? I, I don't think you're gonna be, I, I mean, I don't know, I, unless you're like in some sort of mansion and you gotta shoot from the other side of it or something. I, I don't know what your situation is, but nine times out of 10, you're probably not gonna need a bipod for your home defense gun. But if you're going for like a bolt action, and you're trying to make a precision rifle and you're engaging targets at a known distance, then absolutely, why not? And even if you're just trying to shoot from a comfortable position and lay down all sorts of fire at whatever type of target, then sure, a bipod might be exactly what you're looking for. But just keep in mind, they do add a little bit of weight towards the muzzle, so that's extra weight you would be lugging around with you. Uh, again, something lightweight, 
bolt action where all you have is a sling, a scope, and a bipod, you're probably ready to rock and roll and do some good distance shooting. But speaking of all that stuff, let's take all this to the range, go shoot some, and uh, give you my personal preference on what maybe I prefer. And uh, let's go see if I can challenge myself a little bit too. So now we're out here at Take Aim Training and Range, and we're gonna have a little fun drill here to compare, am I faster with the bipod or finding a different comfortable shooting position, and am I accurate? Three rounds on target, uh, right now standing, just posted up against the post here, and I've got my target set up at 100 yards down range, and three shots, all hits. That's what I'm going for here. Then we're gonna transition to, once the sound goes off, once the timer goes off, I drop the bipod, I'm here, and then it's three targets here. Which one am I gonna be the most accurate and quick with in this one? And then we'll try another one prone. So let's start off standing and let's see how this guy goes. Safety first. All right. So it took me a couple of shots, it took me six, six shots to get three. Probably didn't have my weak hand positioned at a, the best angle, but again, I was trying to go for speed. So 10.88 seconds. Let's go ahead and load this guy back up with six shots, just in case. And now we're gonna go and deploy the bipod, see if it's quicker for me to set up the bipod, get sighted in, and then shoot. Let's try it out. Same drill, three shots on target, this time deploying the bipod and I am going to have to get set up, right? So it might take me a little bit longer to extend the legs and get positioned, but I think my shots might be a little bit more accurate. So let's go ahead and give it a shot and let's see. There we go. I jumped the gun on that first shot but that was at 9.08. So my first shot was 10.88, so a little bit slower, or yeah, a little bit slower and not as accurate. Again, I jumped the gun on that first shot. I, all I get in my head is speed, 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 start pulling the trigger. Slow it down, take that breath, make sure you're practicing those fundamentals, your recoil control. <sighs> take your time, get more accurate shots, and it might just be better, right? So obviously I gotta do a little bit more practicing, but let's go ahead and load up for the next little drill bipod without bipod in the prone. Again, at about 100 yards, give or take, now that we're ahead of the bench, and I will get into position once the timer goes off, so let's hop right into it, how about it? All right, all three shots a hit. Let's see where I'm at here on the timer, 8.02. All right, so I already have a feeling that I might actually be quicker whenever I come here and I'm not having to do deploy the bipod. Let's take a look. All right, let's do it. Oh man, wow, okay. So that was again all hits. And three shots at 7.27. So that was actually a little bit quicker than I thought it was gonna be. And I think that has everything to do with my follow-up shots. I'm not having to pretty much realign my target, or excuse me, realign my sight, because I'm not jumping around as much. Just using my elbows for support, there's a little bit more sway, not as much control deploying the bipod, even extending the legs, and taking the time to do that, getting into a good shooting position, and then pretty much my reticle just staying right on point with the bipod. I think having the bipod obviously just wins no matter what you're doing. Granted, if speed is everything you need dictating the situation that you're in, you might not always have time to deploy the bipod, but if you find yourself, you know, given the uh, opportunity to have a little bit more time, deploy that bipod, get into a nice prone stance, and then all of a sudden you're gonna be rocking and rolling. So bipods I uh, totally recommend. Now there's one more bipod I wanna show y'all. Let's go ahead and show it off. Then you've got fixed bipods, like what you see here on this Malat Vepr. Pretty sweet, right? Accuracy through volume. I think I hit the target. At least they kept their heads down, all right? <laughs> anyway, sometimes you have a fixed integrated bipod like what you see here on this guy. Like I said, the Malat Vepr. 
760 by 39. We may also have one in 545, but that's for a later video. <laughs> anyway, let me know down in the comments, guys. When do you think bipods are most applicable? Me, personally, if you're having to be steady, comfortable, and shooting at distance for a precise shot makes the most sense. Or if you're just, you know, suppressing fire, whatever you need to do, there you go, right? But okay, one gun that you probably shouldn't put a bipod on is our current giveaway. This is the Maxim Defense PDX chambered in 300 blackout. I mean, to each their own, maybe, I don't, I don't know. Maybe if you're tr like really trying to side in your optic, you could throw in a little bipod, but I wouldn't keep it on there. But no, this is our current giveaway and I'm excited to have partnered up with Grayman Tactical and they're providing an entire vehicle loadout molly panel system with the locking mechanism for your firearm, two G-code holsters that are gonna be holstering our classic firearms branded mags, 30 rounders, and of course the 120 rounder that comes with, this is a Lancer mag that comes with the PDX. Oh, this thing is sweet, guys, and I really love shooting it. Again, the EOTech holographic that we're throwing on with it, too, is just a good time. So go check out our video announcing this as our giveaway because we had a great time shooting it. My buddy Daniel came out with his really <laughs> tricked out Toyota Tacoma, and uh, it's if we just had a good time. So go check that video out. Don't forget, one of the entry methods is by using a code word, and the code word for this one is GREY, G-R-E-Y, for Gray Man Tactical, of course. This is a beautifully Cerakoted black gun, but, you know, gray is close enough. So go get those entries in. I'll see you guys down in the comments section all about bipods. And for my buddy that was DMing me there on Instagram, I, I just wouldn't use a bipod for home defense. If you guys have questions like that, feel free to shoot me a message, magdump underscore Morgan on Instagram and Facebook. I'm always willing to talk to you guys and uh, getting out there and having a conversation all about guns. God bless you guys. And we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.